power of your spirit, illumine your word that we might see Christ, the living word, the light of the world. Amen. We begin with the Old Testament lesson from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. Listen for the word of the Lord. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing from plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire, for a child has been born for us. So has been given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with righteous and justice. From this time onward and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among the peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the people, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the people with equity. Let the heavens be glad, let the earth rejoice, let the sea roar and all that fills it, let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall the trees of the forest sing for joy. Sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. And our gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went 
from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Joy and Christmas have gone together for me all my life. I remember as a child looking forward to singing, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. That is my all-time favorite Christmas hymn. Joy to the world. Luke tells us, do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. What is joy? It is astonishing, wrote uh, theologian Karl Barth, how many references there are in the Old and New Testament to delight, joy, bliss, exaltation, merrymaking, and rejoicing, and how emphatically these are demanded from the book of Psalms to the letter to the Philippians. From shout to the Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, in Psalm 100, to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice in Philippians. And dozens of other places in Scripture where we are urged to live joy-filled lives. So again, I ask, what is joy? Is it happiness? Pleasure? Contentment? I would invite you to consider for yourself how you might define joy in the days that lie ahead. I think joy is quite different from happiness or from pleasure. For me, joy goes much deeper. First, I think it's a gift. 
It's not something we can manufacture ourselves or even a gift we can give ourselves. I believe joy is about God, about who God is and what God is up to in the world, and that God calls us to be a part of what God is doing in the world. Now let's look at this birth story that Luke tells us. It's, it's really a pretty radical story. More than announcing a birth, Luke announces the arrival of a whole new world. A new time, a new reign, a new reign of power for all people. The story begins in real time, actually in old time, in chronological time that is marked by who is in power. Remember our text said Quirinius, it's hard to say sometimes, was governor of Syria. It is time marked by travel and taxes and business as usual and the accepted power structure of the day. Luke begins with language that clearly communicates the old when he begins the passage by saying, in those days. That establishes the context of his story. But Luke quickly moves us from the old, the tired, the hopeless way of life in the old power structure to something new. Something new that has happened on this day. It's a new thing that God is doing, and there's no reason to fear. A new time has entered the world. A new age has begun. Salvation is here this day. This new time, this kairos time, is God's time. It's not the kind of time we understand chronologically or by our watches or even historically. It's a new kind of time that is shaped by the will and the character and the intention of God. This chaos occasion has arrived in the birth of a baby who is Christ the Lord. The arrival of this whole new age, of this new way of living, is announced in the songs of angels with the declaration of good news, a great joy for all the people on this day. The old way of life in those days is gone. The new day is here because to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Now let's pause here just a moment to consider the titles that Luke uh, gives this newborn baby. He says um, he's a new Savior. Now that's a title that was formerly reserved for the emperor. He is a new Messiah. That's a title, the royal anointed one who will liberate Israel from the Roman occupation. And he is the Lord who inaugurates this new age. This is the only time in the New Testament these titles are strung together this way. And what is fascinating to me is all of this <laughs> is announced to shepherds. It's not announced in the halls of traditional power, but on the fields in the darkness of night. Now, shepherds, no matter what we do with Hollywood today about the shepherds, in that day, in those days, shepherds were not respected people. They were considered shiftless, dishonest people who often grazed their flocks on somebody else's land. They were not even regarded highly enough to be called to participate in the census. They were tending their flocks. They had not gone to be counted in the registration that had drawn Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. You see, the shepherds were peasants located toward the very bottom of the scale of power and privilege. And yet, it is to the shepherds 
that the angel came. The shepherds. They're watching their sheep during the dark of night when suddenly the darkness was abruptly interrupted by the brilliance of heavenly light. Our text says, the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. <laughs> I guess so. I think I would be terrified if I were walking alone at night with my path lit only by the light of the moon, even a full moon, and suddenly the skies were filled with blinding light. Our scripture says it was the glory of the Lord shining around them. You know what that means? That means God was there. Remember in the Exodus story when Moses went up on Mount Sinai and the glory of the Lord settled on the mountain with Moses there for six days? So here our poor, despised, outcast shepherds, a bunch of nobodies, are visited by the glory of the Lord. And yet they were afraid, they were terrified. The Greek actually says they feared with a great fear. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. The angels assured the shepherds that there is no reason to fear, but there is reason to rejoice. The angel says, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. That phrase, I am bringing you, is important to our understanding of the gospel narrative. Some translations say, I bring, but it's really better translated as, I am bringing, which suggests to us continuous action. So this is not a one-time message. This is not a one-time gift. This is a continuous message. Every time we are surrounded by the glory of the Lord, whether it is when we are in prayer or in Bible study or in service to others or in worship or even Wednesday night gatherings, we can be confident that the angel of the Lord is saying to us, do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news this day. And the good news is a great joy. Again, the original Greek says, I am bringing you good news, a great joy, which will be for all people. Here is where we get to the scandal of the Christmas story. The scandal is that God came into human history as a vulnerable baby to deliver God's people from oppression and captivity and fear, and worry, and doubt. Just as the darkness of the night sky was interrupted by the brilliance of heavenly light, God in Jesus Christ has interrupted the dark sorrow of our lives with the brilliance of divine joy. And just as God's glory visited a ragtag, common, hardworking, distrusted group of shepherds who were going about their normal routine, their night shift work, so God is inclined to visit you and me in the mundane and even pain-filled parts of our lives. You see, God could have come in splendor, in earthly power, but instead, God cho chose to enter human history, identifying with the powerless, the oppressed, the poor, the hopeless, the homelessness, on this holy night. Among them, God could bring about a new world order, the world in which God is present with God's people, bringing the good news of Jesus Christ into every circumstance. The good news of release to those who are captive to sin and pain and grief and sorrow and disease and death. You see, even death 
is not the final word in Jesus Christ. No, resurrection, new life is God's final word. Yes, God brings hope, the hope of Christ, into every circumstance of our lives. Do we recognize the hand of God at work in the everyday, unnoticeable moments of our lives? It's helpful here for me to remember that Mary did not have to make this journey to Bethlehem because in that day, women were not counted in the census. It really is quite unusual that she went with Joseph. He could have made the trip in much less time without her. Taking her with him slowed him down and increased the danger to the baby she was carrying. For some reason, unknown to us, Joseph must have thought it less dangerous for Mary to travel with him than to remain in Nazareth. From whom did she flee? It was not the Romans. I wonder if it was her own people. The current concern could have been that the religious of her town would have made an example of her and killed her and her baby for being pregnant out of wedlock. Joseph had to go to his family's birthplace because of Rome's occupation and the decree by Emperor Augustus. Mary may have had to go because of judgmental religious people in her own community. Do you think Mary and Joseph recognized the hand of God at work in all of that? Would you have seen it? I don't know that I would have. Here is the message of the Christian of Christmas miracle. God is present. God is present this day, even in the inconvenient harassing, unfair, very painful parts of our lives. God does not abandon us to the pain nor to the fear. No, God's presence in our lives is the divine joy that comes in the most unexpected ways, at the most unexpected times, through the least expected people. How do we know this? <coughs> We know this divine presence because we know Jesus is born, Christ is Lord, the Messiah is here this day. The new age has arrived. It is no longer the days of old, but it is the now of the kingdom of God. Just as the night sky was filled with the heavenly light, so our world is filled with divine joy. The joy that comes in the birth of a vulnerable baby whose very presence ushers in the new age of God on this holy night. My friends, God does not abandon you or me in the journey of life. No, quite the opposite. God arrives. God arrives in ways that surprise us. God arrives at times that startle us. And God arrives through people who absolutely astonish us. And most importantly, we know that God comes to us in Jesus Christ. You see, the declaration the angel made to the shepherds while Quirinius was governor of Syria is just as true for us today as it was then. Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, the Messiah, Lord. 
My friends, may the glory of the Lord shine around you this day and in all your days to come. Amen.